common problem with video and motion graphics is that you get improper source materials. Maybe the images are too large and you're wasting time processing these huge images. Or maybe they're all stored as JPEGs and JPEGs are really a poor format to use in video production. It adds additional compression and it can cause errors in the timeline when you render the images. Fortunately, Photoshop offers an easy command called the image processor, which will allow you to take an entire folder of images and resize them and convert them to a new, more video-friendly format, such as TIFF. Let's see how we can harness the image processor to quickly take several images and prepare them for use in a video project. We have touched upon some of the drawbacks to actions in certain file formats like JPEGs. If you're running a action on a JPEG, Photoshop is going to ask you to choose a compression scheme for when you close that image. Similarly, if you start with a flattened file and then promote it to having layers, Photoshop will prompt you for a name for the PSD document. Now, this intervention on your part really defeats the purpose of the action. So let's look at a way to still apply automation while processing our images. We can choose File, Scripts, Image Processor. And this allows us to specify a folder of images. Let's go ahead and I'll select this folder that I named Image Processor that contains 10 images of flowers that I'd like to prep for a DVD slideshow. I'll choose that. Then I could specify where I'd like to save it. Let's go ahead and make a folder and we'll call it DVD Slideshow. And I'll choose it. Then I must specify a format. And I'm going to go ahead and convert these to a TIFF file, which is a great format for high quality. Then we must specify an action. And I'd like to use from the video action set the DVD and TSC standard. Now, before I click OK, Let's go ahead here and we'll save this set here. I'll call this DVD Slideshow and TSC. There we go. Let's cancel that. Let's check our action and see if it's ready to run. Well, that DVD Slideshow and TSC contains a stop, and that stop lets you know that this action is going to format the images for an NTSC DVD Slideshow. That's great but we don't need that stop anymore, so we can throw that to the trash, so the action will not pause on that message. Let's go back, File, Scripts, Image Processor, and we can go ahead and load that set that we already picked. Out to the desktop, I had stored DVD Slideshow and TSC. Let's open that, and notice that all the values are loaded. It says take that folder, go ahead and save it here, create TIFFs, and run this action. Let's click Run. Photoshop now opens and resizes the image, and this action for the DVD slideshow is actually converting them to non-square pixels, as well as pillar boxing or letter boxing the images with black bars to make sure that they are properly sized to fit the entire image within the DVD slideshow spec. Now, using an image processor script like this is a very effective way to quickly process your images and get them at the correct size. While many DVD authoring applications can take images of any size or format, all you're doing is increasing your build time when you go to make the disk. By correctly processing the images in advance using Adobe Photoshop, you will greatly cut down on production time and improve the overall quality of the image on the screen. Now, Photoshop quickly finished. Let's check the desktop here and take a look at that DVD slideshow folder. And there are the images that we specified. Notice that these images were all letterboxed because they were not quite the right aspect ratio for the television screen. And if I open one of these up, I will see that it has non-square pixels. And if we check the image size, we'll see that it's sized at 720 by 480 for the video screen. And let's hit cancel. And that is all set. We can close that. And there you have the image processor in action.